stop obsessing over the kick serve. If you're playing at the recreational level, meaning you're not like 5-0 above, former collegiate level player playing on the tour, we are obsessing way too much on the kick serve and not enough on the slice. That's right, the slice serve is going to give you way better opportunities to win the point than the kick serve. Now, I'm not knocking the kick serve. There's a reason that you see every second serve on tour, it's not every, I mean, they're mixing in slice as well, but the predominantly hitting kick serves. Now, what, let's go over, what is the advantage of a kick serve anyway? So the advantage is that the ball is moving and it, it changes where your contact point is gonna be. So at the recreational level, that is huge. If you've ever you know, played anyone with any substantial kick, one minute the ball's here, then it's here, and, or maybe you think that you know, you've got it timed and you got the racket out front, but it kicks to you and it gets your contact back behind you. These are all great weapons for a kick serve, and if you have one, you're probably driving everyone crazy with it. The problem is the kick serve, a true kick serve, is really difficult to learn. It takes a long time to develop it. Most players have a topspin serve, and a topspin serve is fantastic, it's good. But trying to actually get the ball moving consistently ends up in just a lower serve percentage or, or double faults and if you're trying to do it on the second serve if you're not doing it correctly. All right, so now that I've gotten off my pedal so there, don't get me wrong, I love the kick serve. I've, we've done a ton of videos on the kick serve. I just think there's more juice that you can squeeze out of the slice serve. And the reason being is that the slice serve is relatively easy when compared to the kick serve. What it also does is makes your opponent out of position, but not by depth, but by getting them off the court. For instance, Roger Federer, over 70% of the time on the deuce court, on the very first point of the match, he's gonna hit a slice serve. Why? It drags the opponent off the court, it makes them hit up on the ball because the ball is so low, and then he has the entire court to work with. All right, so if you're buying in, if you believe me, let's talk about how we're going to improve your slice serve. So the first thing and most important thing, not gonna spend any time on this, but you gotta have a continental grip. Right. You absolutely have to have a continental grip, index knuckle, or bevel two, heel pad ideally, somewhere between bevel one and bevel two. I think bevel two is the easiest. If you like pulling your hand around a little bit, that's okay too, to feel the outside of the ball. But what we wanna talk about is the contact point. Where should you be hitting the ball? So in the beginning, if you're just learning the slice, you, you know, may, maybe you're playing uh, you know, around that 3-0 USTA or maybe even 3-5, and you're just learning the slice. Cutting the ear off the ball is, is a, has been around for a long, long time. And it's just like it sounds. As, you, as you're working to the ball, you're simply trying to cut the ear off. But the problem with that is at a higher level, it doesn't give the ball any pace. So that's not where you want to aim. What you really want to do is you want to aim, if you imagine this being a clock, you want to aim for 5 o'clock. And that's actually slightly under the ball, right? It's slightly on the side and under the ball and that's gonna get that ball to bite. So when you practice this, when you get out in the court, let's first use exaggeration theory. So as you step up, the cool thing about tennis, a lot of times if we just simplify it, if you give yourself a target and you coordinate the racket with the ball, it'll go there. So tell yourself, for me right now, I'm gonna slide back, make sure I'm in frame here. For me right now, I wanna aim for the side curtain. So I'm gonna work through it. All right, so I didn't quite get there. I have to exaggerate. Okay, better. Now this time I wanna make sure I don't hop the ground first. All right, so now you can see that that ball is wrapping around. The ball is moving more like a true slice, but I had to give myself permission to miss that egregiously, like really, really, really wide. And from there, we're gonna start working our way back. And so now that you've given yourself permission to miss wide, right? Like start raining it back, start aiming towards the alley and start working on that five o'clock contact. There we go, I snuck one in. And what you'll find is you aim towards the alley, you start finding this, the target that you're working for and it starts working towards that deuce course. So let's talk about the, the fundamentals. Let's talk about technique here for just a second. So we know where to aim. Now, the big question is going to be, well, on a slice serve, do you pronate or not, right? You can do either. So on the slice serve, we have continued pronation, and we see this a lot on tour, that as the contact is made, 
the arm is still pronating out and then coming through. And then you have discontinued pronation, which is kind of what we get when we focus on slicing the ear off the ball. And that simply is the arm works up, the racket works through here, and then from here, it stays more on edge and then it comes down. Now, I, 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 I don't want you to put too much focus on this, right? If you're starting to think about how you're pronating all, it's gonna become really unnatural. Focus on doing it organically. The tip I will give you though, is focus on finishing with the palm down. So regardless of, of what you're doing with pronation, if you finish, I'm sorry, with the palm up, if you focus on finishing with the palm up, right, this nice cupping, you're gonna start finding that slice serve, all right? So you might be asking, but where, where should you toss the bowl, Nate? Well, you can hit the slice serve from one o'clock, but if you're more comfortable putting it at three o'clock parallel to the baseline, that's fine too. And I think a lot of times, the counter is like, but if you toss at three o'clock, everyone's gonna know where you're going. You'd be surprised at how rarely they do. And the, a great antidote here is the story about Agassi when he was working with Gilbert. Gilbert famously was like, Andre, when you toss parallel to the baseline, everyone knows you're slicing. You, you know, you're giving it away. And Andre was like, get over there, Brad. Brad Gilbert goes over there. Andre slices wide. Gilbert hits three different returns. Andre hits a winner on the third ball. If the slice serve is good enough, it doesn't really matter. Now, the reason we don't see it a little bit more on the pro tour, I mean, we, use, we see the slice serve in absolutely a ton, but like guys that can hit a buck 30, they're gonna get more reward for that. But keep in mind on the tour, professional players move fantastically at an angle. They move amazing, they're you know, superhuman athletes. They move amazing in any direction. At the recreational level, the one angle that we struggle with, right? Like recreational players struggle with moving diagonal. So cutting the ball off is really, really difficult. All right, that's something you definitely wanna keep in mind. All right, so the toss, whatever you're comfortable with, this one o'clock and then three o'clock as well. Now, when you go to the ad courts, I find that tossing for a kick is really useful as well because it offers really good disguise. So if you're going T on the ad court, if you toss more back towards what would be a kick serve, it's gonna be advantageous because it's gonna disguise your intent. Now you can still use either one. You can still stay at one o'clock. You can even come back over to three. I do think three is a little bit tougher on the ad court, but play with it, all right? And then even play with, it, with tossing for a kick and then go and slice because it disguises so well. So when you're disguising the slice and go more kick, you'll see there's a little bit of a hybrid, like the ball still jumps as if it's a kick, but it's got a ton of side spin on it, making that ball pull a bit away from the opponent's strike zone. So it's a great serve to mix in. If you've been just hitting the top spin serve, you have a kicker going out wide is great, but if you've been hitting the top spin serve out wide to the opponent's backhand and they're sitting, protecting their backhand, mixing in the slice T is a great time. All right, so again, let's review. Why is the slice serve so advantageous? One, it, it makes the opponent have to move at an angle to successfully cut off this serve and do any real damage. And that's really, really difficult. That moving at an angle, cutting off the corners of the court is the hardest thing to do under the 5-0 level. Secondly, you win core position because of that. Most players will start deeper and then try to move maybe laterally I mean, even if they're successfully defending the serve, they're so far off the court that you can play behind them, you can play into the open court. And off the return, I get this a lot, well, Nate, what if they're able to play me down the line? If they play down the line, especially like on the deuce court, you have your backhand wide open to the, the open ad court, posing ad court. And same thing on the, the, if you're serving to the ad court, if you slice T, almost every time they're gonna play back into your forehand where you can then go to work. So try this out, give it a go. If you spend half the time that you do on your kick serve or on your slice serve, you're gonna have a weapon, you're gonna have that can opener that's gonna give you a whole lot of free points if you're willing to win the ball on the third shot. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.